Howdy folks. Um, quick video here to explain what our, our last unit is going to be like, and I'm going to put some some requirements on it as well. So we're going to read the book, uh, The Catcher in the Rye, which is a, it's a wonderful book. It's pretty short. It's about 200 pages. Uh, it's just a great narrative written by a author named J.D. Salinger back in the 1940s. Um, so it's a little old, but it still holds up really, really well. One of my favorite books. Um, and I'm going to call this unit sort of an extension unit um, because it's going to delve into some of these extracurricular English things um, like creative writing. Uh, in the rest of your life, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm an English teacher, but in the rest of your life, uh, you don't need to have read this book to like succeed in life. But at the same time, I think it is a really important story to read um, and to understand. And also, I think practicing taking in art and creating art um, definitely can't hurt you as a human being. Um, so I'm, that's why I'm calling it an extension unit, because I'm going to put some requirements on it before you start. Now, this unit in itself is going to be a requirement to get an A or B in the class. Like you, you have to do these things to earn that A or B. But um, before you even like think about tackling Catcher in the Rye, there's some, I think, even more important prerequisites that I need you to have finished up. So here they are. So if you're not done with these things, you're not starting Catcher in the Rye yet. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to complete your resume and your cover letter. Those are assignments number 103 and 104 in Google Classroom. Um, I need you to get a passing grade on the ACT post tests. Um, so that's both the English and the reading. So if English is 33 out of 75 correct, reading is 10 out of 20 correct. That's what's considered a passing grade. Um, so if you need to retake those, you're going to have to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. We'll figure out a study plan um, and we'll get you another test and reopen those up. And then lastly, you need to finish your research assignments, all of those assignments in a research unit, and complete them to a passing grade, right? I need to see some mastery in this stuff, or at least approaching proficiency um, for assignments 201 through 208. So all of those need to get done. Um, if you get all those done, I, I'm probably going to have enough information to uh, at least give you a passing grade. Like you can at least get a D, maybe a C if you've done all those really, really well. Um, but then we'll head on to Catcher in the Rye. So hopefully that makes sense. Holler at me with questions. Um, and so for those of you who are done with all these things, here's what Catcher in the Rye is going to look like. Um, so we're going to read this book. And we've got two goals as we read this book. Number one, we're going to read this as a writer, pretending that like, hey, we're a writer and we're getting information um, from this, this really, really impressive novel, uh, some inspiration on like, hey, here's how I write personal narratives. Here's how I can create um, a story that's engaging and maybe even a little bit quirky. Uh, so as we read, I'm going to be asking you to analyze how this author's choices concerning how to structure the specific parts of the text kind of come to fruition. Um, I'll explain that in our next slide. And second one, I'm going to ask us to analyze cases in which um, what is said is not actually what it's meant. Because this story, as you find out, is about this really sarcastic kind of head in the clouds teenager who doesn't really know what's going on. And he's, he's kind of snarky. Um, he's a character that you love to hate, but you also just love by the end of the story. Um, and so figuring out how what he's really saying behind these words um, is going to be an important element to understand what the story's about. So those are our two reading goals. Um, and our second one is we're going to write. We're going to create our own personal narrative um, where we get to flex you know some of our creative writing muscles a little bit. Uh, we get to learn about expositions and rising action and conflict and plot and descriptive writing and all these kind of fun extra literary things. Um, so as we're reading, uh, I'm not going to do anything reading tests. There's not going to be some big test at the end of the book to make sure that you read it. Uh, that's like, hey, what color was Holden Caulfield's hunting cap? And you've got to tell me the right answer. That, that doesn't matter at all. Um, instead, what I'm going to have you do is stop and reflect on some different elements of the story as we read it. So after you kind of finish the exposition, and the introduction of the conflict of the story. I'm going to have you stop after chapter seven and write me like a one page reflection. Um, so as, as you're reading these, you'll be going through some units that will kind of explain, oh, here's what an exposition is. Here's some ways that you can kind of build that if you were writing your own story. 
And you can take a look at how does J.D. Salinger build his exposition and introduce his conflict um, as you're reading. Same thing for like building the rising action or the climax and resolution of a story. Uh, kind of looks like this. This is probably a plot diagram that you've understood. So we're going to break this book up into three chunks. And you're just going to reflect on each chunk that we read. Um, all right. So that's it for the introduction of the unit. Um, we'll obviously have a lot more. There'll be more videos about these different elements of the story, the uh, exposition, the rising action, and the resolution as we go through it. Um, but really, just enjoy this book. It's good. It's really good. Get into his voice. Get into his character. Um, and for once, maybe appreciate a, a, a book in English class. I know I'm making you read it, but it's still a good book. All right. Good luck, folks. Holler with questions.